Dracarys. Dracarys. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my House of the Dragon Daenerys Targaryen video. There are several references and Easter eggs for her during episode one and throughout the entire series, and they really want to connect Rhaenyra to her because there are a lot of things about the two of them that are very similar. Things that they do and just things about them in general. Along with the fact that they just look very similar, like Millie Alcock, the actress who plays young Rhaenyra on the show, looks like she could also be Amelia Clark's great-great-great-grandmother many times removed. So I'll explain all the Easter eggs and foreshadowing connection between the two of them across the many generations of their family. If you're new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes just like I did for the main series Game of Thrones. Be sure to subscribe to get them all. We're doing a giveaway for HBO Max subscriptions. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and post your favorite Daenerys reference that you've seen on House of the Dragon so far. The funny thing is, is that even Robert Baratheon on Game of Thrones is also like the great, great grandson of Rhaenyra, many, many times removed. So like Robert Baratheon, Daenerys, and Jon Snow are all related. You can thank all the sister wiving for that. But during episode one, they open the episode after a quick flashback to the Great Council of 101 AC with a direct mention of Daenerys Targaryen. Like they literally write her name at the beginning of the episode before she's born and before the Mad King, her father, Aerys II, is killed by Jaime Lannister during Robert's Rebellion. Burn them all indeed. Even though at the end of the episode and during the episode two trailer that I just did a video for, I'll put a link at the end of this and down in the description below so you can rewatch that, you hear Rhaenyra reading Aegon the Conqueror's prophecy, which he calls a Song of Ice and Fire, but during his Song of Ice and Fire document that Aegon the Conqueror wrote, he also literally wrote down and referenced the prince who was promised, which is also meant to be a reference to Jon Snow in addition to Daenerys. From my blood. Come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. Like this dragon dream that he had is a reference to both Jon Snow and Daenerys because Jon Snow is literally the son of ice and fire, but together Jon Snow and Daenerys, like when they come together, they become the song of ice and fire because Starks and Targaryens. So really the original dragon dream that Aegon the Conqueror had was supposed to be about two people. Instead of the document that he wrote, he thought that it was just about one heir. Like my future heir will stop this coming threat talking about the long night, the White Walkers. George R. R. Martin also writes that prophecy is a big deal in Game of Thrones, but most people misinterpret prophecies. So like Aegon the Conqueror just misinterpreted his dragon dream of the long night a little bit. Oh, it's meant to be two people. One of the other big Easter eggs too is when she's reading and learning about the Long Night, these dragon dreams, is meant to be very similar to the visions that Daenerys had, like your next big Easter egg here. One of her visions in the House of the Undying was about the Long Night. She saw a lot of different things. It wasn't just the Long Night, but her dragon dream, so to speak, of the Long Night was the vision where she saw herself passing through the gate at Castle Black, past the wall, and saw the thick winter blizzard just obscuring everything. Like she couldn't see anything past the Wall of White. And that was just meant to be her seeing the coming of the Long Night of the White Walkers and be seeing more of a connection to Daenerys Targaryen because of a couple of different things. Like they look alike, yes, but both of them at an early age at least started on the same path. Like both of them were highborn ladies, typical, even though Daenerys was living in exile at the time, she was still considered a very valuable political match because of who her brother Viserys III, Illyrio, and as we learn later, consequently Varys, who was helping orchestrate the Targaryen restoration, planned to marry her to Khal Drogo to gain access to his army. That was the whole idea. They wanted to retake the Iron Throne, so they needed an army to do that. It's just that at the time that was happening, when they were making those plans, Viserys, her brother, assumed that it would be him to take the Iron Throne. So RIP, that didn't go very well for him. So you have a male relative of hers, obviously her brother in this case, thinking that it's going to be him this whole time, until it's not. In House of the Dragon Episode 1, Rhaenyra also kind of had a version of that going on. She was a highborn lady, basically like the most eligible bachelorette in the kingdom, and everyone, even her at first, kind of assumed that she'd just be married off to one of the other great houses for money or for some political alliance. Really good example is Dorne. So at this point in history, when House of the Dragon takes place, Dorne still hasn't become part of the crown officially. So like a marriage to the Martells was considered for her early on as a way to bring them into the Seven Kingdoms officially. But then, just like Daenerys, Rhaenyra's circumstances changed dramatically like on a dime. Her uncle, Daemon Targaryen, had long assumed that he was going to be the one to take the Iron Throne, as she did, too. 
Damon gets exiled, Rhaenyra becomes the heir in the same way that Daenerys became the heir after Viserys died, a very untimely death. Obviously the difference is that Damon is still very much alive. Also at the beginning of the episode, when they're introducing Rhaenyra's character for the first time, huge easter egg for Daenerys, they introduce her riding on her dragon Cyrax while playing a remixed version of Daenerys Targaryen's theme music from Game of Thrones. Now Daenerys had three dragons, but she thought of them as her children, very literally. Even though Rhaenyra's relationship with Cyrax isn't quite as close as Daenerys' relationship with her dragons because Daenerys really didn't have any other Targaryens that she knew of at the time that were part of her family. Like, she thought that she was all alone. But Cyrax is also one of the things that Rhaenyra cares about most in the world. She thinks of Cyrax as being, like, part of her family. All the Targaryens think of their dragons individually as part of their family. But also for those of you asking if Daenerys' dragons Drogon, Viserion, and Rhaegal are descendants of Rhaenyra's dragon or any of the other dragons that we're seeing on the show currently, Daenerys' dragon eggs, as far as we know, were a wedding gift to her from Illyrio who got them from Ashai in the Far East. Currently there's no documents that explain where the dragon eggs came from before that, so someone could have stolen them from one of the clutches of dragon eggs way earlier in the timeline when the Targaryen family was still around in a much bigger way. But also, you have to remember that dragons also roam freely around the world before the ancient Valyrians tamed them. In the coastline on the far eastern continent, like over by Ashai, way, way over here, it is pockmarked with all kinds of caves where a bunch of ancient dragons are supposed to have lived naturally. So there's also the theory that Daenerys' dragon eggs could have come from one of the clutches stolen over in this part of the world. We'll see if we find any more Easter eggs for that in future episodes or other series later in the timeline. But for Daenerys and Rhaenyra, both of them early on during their rise, people generally didn't take either of them very seriously, like the Wise Masters, then the Great Masters and Marine both laughed at Daenerys until she sacked their city with her army. In the same way that no one really pays much attention to Rhaenyra beyond the fact that she's like a commodity as the world's most powerful bachelorette, most favorable marriage in the kingdom. And the other real big reason why they want to make that Daenerys connection at the beginning of the series in general, like the entire series, is because they want to make a parallel for the path that Rhaenyra could eventually follow. Like the famous line, when a Targaryen is born, the gods flip a coin, one side greatness, the other side madness. Which way is Rhaenyra going to go? Like, will she eventually start making the same mistakes that Daenerys does later in the timeline? And for those of you asking about the Targaryen madness, that didn't become a thing that the kingdom started talking about in a bigger way till later in their family's history, closer to the events of the main show. Like a few generations before the Mad King, Aerys II. By that time, there had been many, many generations of heavy inbreeding leading to a lot of genetic issues, and the quote about the gods flipping a coin with a new Targaryen turning mad eventually was usually chalked up to that. But the other component in their madness in general is just the sheer hubris in their family after having so many generations of supremacy with their dragons. And that started long before Rhaenyra was born, like way earlier in their family's history after Aegon the Conqueror conquered the Six Kingdoms. Didn't quite conquer Dorne, so you can't call it the Seven Kingdoms at the time. During episode one, she and her father Viserys talk about how their power, their control over dragons, is an illusion. The Targaryens are no different than everyone else. That's also a reference to the eventual Targaryen madness that Daenerys is supposed to have succumbed to. Like, it's not just a genetic thing. When Rhaenyra is talking about how Targaryens think that they're gods, basically, or like the next best thing to actual gods, and they have this grand mission that they have to undertake. All the things that they do are ordained by the gods. For better or worse, like better in the case of their family being the ones to stop the Long Night with their dragons, as she's reading about here from Aegon the Conqueror. But bad in the fact that eventually Daenerys, succumbing to the hype, so to speak, like getting high on her own supply, decides that it's their duty, their responsibility, to help everyone around the world. And they're going to liberate the rest of the entire world, no matter how many people they have to kill to do it. Like, ooh, that doesn't sound like it's going to be good. Daenerys planning to kill everyone with her kindness, her benevolence. This first series, House of the Dragon, is meant to cover the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War, as the showrunners talk about it, the beginning of the end of their family. Things slowly going spectacularly off the rails in the most spicy way possible. So Rhaenyra is talking here to her father about how a lot of people in their family have slowly started to drink the same Kool-Aid that Daenerys eventually drank, getting high on themselves, so to speak. Like, we have this grand responsibility, but really, deep down, for a lot of the people in their family, it becomes more of an ego thing and more about power. So it'll be interesting to see how the show portrays the true events of what happened during the dance. Like, what did Rhaenyra actually wind up doing, and how similar was she to Daenerys? Like, how similar were their stories ultimately, and why did Rhaenyra do a lot of the stuff that she'll eventually do? 
This was one of the huge differences in the way they plotted out the House of the Dragon story from the original Game of Thrones series, because towards the later seasons of Game of Thrones, we kind of only got the speed run version of a lot of characters' plots. We really didn't get a lot of context for why Daenerys started to go mad. It was like the Cliff Notes version and the people, the actors, the show after the fact explaining why things were happening a certain way. So that's why they have a much slower burn plan for House of the Dragon so that you just understand why all the characters are doing what they're doing, like where they're coming from, when things really go off the rails. And even though this video is mostly meant to be about the parallels between Rhaenyra, Daenerys, the Easter eggs that are using on the show, just based on the episode 2 trailer, it seems like we're also going to get a lot of Jon Snow references eventually too. I think they do want to have a lot of connections between what's happening here and provide more context for things that are happening later in the timeline during the events of Game of Thrones. Like, no, 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 this is why this was really happening. This is why Aegon the Conqueror really conquered the Seven Kingdoms. But if you spotted any other big Daenerys Targaryen references and Easter eggs in the episode, just write them below in the comments. My Full House of the Dragon Episode 2 video will post Sunday after they release it. Congratulations, Stans Krilla. You're the giveaway winner for my last big House of the Dragon video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my House of the Dragon Episode 2 trailer video and click here for my full House of the Dragon Episode 1 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.